Let's talk about parameter binding now. now. What is parameter binding? It's a way in which you can bind specific values to parameters in your SQL query. Now, we have this example, you know, we did this earlier, we did a from user details, where uh, the ID greater than five. So my intention is to pull up all the user records whose ID is greater than the value five. And just to recap, the code that's happening here is I'm just um, pulling up the list of all the users as per the query here, and then I'm uh, printing out the username for all those users. Okay, so now in a scenario like this, you know, where I say user ID is greater than a particular value, normally what would happen is this value would not be hard coded. This would probably be a value from a different variable and I would have to append the variable over here. So what would happen is normally I would have a int min user id say this would have been set as value 5 somewhere else in the in the application and then I'm getting this variable. Now I would have to create a query where I need to pull up all the user details where the id is greater than this, the value of this variable. So what I would do here is I would say plus min user ID. This will work fine. Now if I run this, um, it will pull up the list of users after the fifth user. And you can see here the query is also getting um, updated with this. But uh, this is actually a potential security problem. Now this leads to what is called as SQL query injection, or sometimes it's just called a SQL injection. Now what this means is that you can um, inject some values into the query and you can get results which is not the intended result. Now an attacker, uh, you know, a hacker of your application can use this kind of a way of um, adding values to the query to manipulate their user inputs so that you get data which is not really intended. Now let's take for example this uh, min user ID which uh, we have set the value of 5 here. Let's say this came from user input. Now the user entered the value of 5 and now we are passing this on and you are generating the results and you're displaying it. So now let's say the uh, the attacker the attacker is going to try a few things to see if uh, you know the he or she can break into the system somehow so one thing that the attacker might try is something like this now let's say i realize that there is a chance that the application might be doing like it's just adding the parameter to the query so what i do is i enter a particular value in my user input now let's say i enter something like this okay first let me make this as a string but most of the UI frameworks at least at least on web applications most of the UI frameworks have user inputs uh, being received as strings so it is uh, it is you know it's very easy to do SQL injection on strings I'm not able to recollect if you can do this uh, with an integer data type uh, but with strings yes it's fairly easy if you're uh, writing queries like this to uh, do SQL injection now let's say I have a string input where the user is actually entering the value and uh, say the user can enter a value from 1 to 10 and then I'm substituting the value here. Now let's say the user enters a value like this. Let's say it's a uh, 5 or 1 equals 1. So now what I'm doing here is I am closing this where clause. Now the where is over here where user ID is greater than. Now I'm closing this where clause by entering a value and then I'm also adding an R and then I'm giving a expression that's always gonna be true. So no matter whatever is the result of this first where clause, the second where clause is always gonna be true. So it's gonna return me all the records in the table. So now let's run this, see what happens. And here you see all the records have been pulled up. So this is um, the way in which a SQL injection can happen. Now, this is not really an ideal example because we have a user ID greater than. Now the user can enter a user ID 
of min user id of zero and still manage to uh, get all the records but uh, i hope you're getting the point here the point here is that irrespective of what where clause you are actually having here the user can bypass the where clause and inject their own where clause and do anything they want with it. They could as well have a semicolon here so that they end the query and then write a whole new query, be it a delete from table, you know, so that they can delete all the records in the table. So there's, there's a lot of high work that uh, a user can cause if uh, we are doing SQL uh, addition uh, instead of uh, something else that we're gonna talk about. If we just do, at, you know, concatenation, then we are uh, we are at risk of such kind of attacks. So the the solution for this problem is to do parameter substitution. So that's what we're going to look at, and we're going to look at how uh, Hibernate helps us to do this parameter substitution or parameter binding, as it's called. So let's take this example itself. Now I'll have uh, string min user ID as five say. Okay, so this is the input that I've got from the user. Now what I'll do is instead of uh, adding that value to this string here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, this is actually a parameter and it cannot be a snippet of the query. So let me, let me just uh, write this here so that it becomes clear. Now what I'll do here is I will have a parameter in this query. Say something like this. Now, this question mark is a placeholder for where the parameter needs to go. So I'm telling Hibernate that I have one parameter here and this parameter needs to be substituted with the value that I'm going to supply now. So now that I have put a placeholder there, I need to supply this value to Hibernate. The way I'm going to supply the value is by using query dot set. Now in this query dot set, you, you have uh, a few data types you can see here, you have a set binary, you have a set boolean, you have a set character, set date. So all these are indicative of the data type that you wanna add over here. Now, in my case, uh, the data type is an int, so I will set integer. Now the integer, set integer takes two parameters. I'll set the first parameter as zero and uh, I will explain why in a minute. Now, the second parameter has to be the integer value that I wanna substitute. So since I have a string, I will use the integer dot percent. And I will pass the value min user ID. So what I'm doing is I'm substituting the value of this parameter into the query at a placeholder. Now this works fine for uh, string placeholders as well. Now if this were a, if it's a string comparison, say I had a like operator or something like that, then I would use a query dot set string and the same thing would work. Now let's save and try to run this. We'll see what happens. So there you go, it's actually pulling up the data, fine. Now we'll look at what the zero means. The zero is a position indicator. Now I could have multiple parameters here. And uh, in order to set parameter values, I need to specify which placeholder will be uh, substituted with which parameter. Now let's have a look at, let's modify this query a bit. Let's see where user ID greater than question mark and username equals and I will give a username value here. So let me add, let me declare another string. User 10. So I will need to substitute the value of this input username over here. Of course, in this particular scenario, these two are uh, redundant, but just go with me here. Now, this parameter substitution is also done by using a question mark. Now, how will you know what needs to be substituted with what? At least, how will Hibernate know what needs to be substituted with what? And that's the reason why we have this position indicator. Zero is the first 
question mark. So it starts looking from the left and it sees the first question mark that's zero. And now the second question mark is one. So if I need to set this, the first parameter here has to be one and then the second parameter has to be the value of course. So what I'll do here is I'll again do a query dot query dot set. This time I'll do a string. So again, it takes two parameters. Now I'll pass the set, you know, this time I'm going to pass the first parameter as one because I want this question mark to be substituted with this value. And then the second parameter is of course the value that needs to be substituted. This will be username, which is this one. So now if I run this, they go user 10 comes up. Actually, that's the only one that should come up because with username as a more restrictive criteria. You can try out the um, the SQL injection example that I told you earlier. It'll not work on this scenario where you're actually plugging in the parameters because uh, you know, you're, you're saying I'm gonna plug in a parameter and then you put a where clause in it, Hibernate detects this and says, hey, something is going wrong and then it will not run the query. Okay, so this is one way we can do this. There is another way if you're not, if you don't wanna be bothered about the positions and you want to you know just write the query and then substitute parameters directly there is another way you can do this and the way to do that is by using this colon and the parameter name so what you can do is instead of putting random placeholders which do not have any significant meaning and you're attaching meaning to it depending on the position of the placeholders Instead, this way, you attach a name to the placeholder and then you substitute the parameters to the name. So I'm gonna put another placeholder here called username. So the way I put a named placeholder is by using a colon and giving it a name. So now that I have two named placeholders here, I can set these two parameters to the names without having to worry about where the placeholders actually are and without having to worry about the position of those placeholders. So now if you look at this uh, query.set integer method, let's move this aside. Okay, now if I do a control space, I see that there are two query.set integers. One, it takes an integer as the first argument. And the second method, that takes a string as a second, as the first argument. So this is what we need to look at now. The first method is a positional placeholder substitution where you specify the position, which is an integer. The second method is the name placeholder substitution where you have to specify the name. So this is a string. So what I'll do is I'll use this option. Now the name will be user ID. So I need to give user ID as a string. And of course the second argument will be the same It'll be the value itself. So I'm going to substitute that here. Okay, in the same way, the query.chat string has to take this name as the first argument as a string. So I will pass username as the first argument. So again, what we're doing here is instead of putting a question mark and then assigning parameters based on the position of the question mark, we are putting placeholders with names and then we are assigning uh, arguments, parameters to those names in the placeholders. So let me save and run this. There you go. The user shows up because the query is run fine. So these are the two ways in which we can do parameter substitution. And uh, it is highly recommended that we use parameter substitution for any queries with parameters instead of just appending parameters because Appending parameters might lead to SQL injection attacks. So this is a safer way to add parameters to your queries.